we're going to return to the definition of a protein. A protein is simply a linear sequence of amino acids that spontaneously folds up into a 3D shape following basic principles of chemistry. We've talked about the principles of chemistry as revealed by the, the water kit. So now we're going to focus on the amino acids, this is the sequence of amino acids. So for this, we're going to use what we refer to as the Molymod model of an amino acid. And we like to say things like, uh, well, first of all, we say there are 20 common amino acids that make up proteins. And then we confuse students by saying that all 20 amino acids are identical and different. And that doesn't make any sense. But if you grab this amino acid by the green sphere and hold it like this, we can talk about the backbone of the amino acid. So the backbone of the amino acid is made up of an amino group. This blue atom here is a nitrogen, so that's an amino group. And then on the other end, we have a carboxylic acid group. This is a carbon with uh, two oxygens. Uh, so it's an amino acid, and those two groups are joined by another carbon, which we refer to as the alpha carbon. So these backbone atoms, then, are what makes every amino acid identical. They have the same common backbone structure. But then, this green sphere attached to the alpha carbon, this is just a generic side chain, or R group, we sometimes say. And this is what makes each of the 20 amino acids structurally different. There are 20 different chemical structures that make up the side chains of the amino acids. So in that sense, every amino acid is different. Okay, if a protein is simply a linear sequence of amino acids, that means that to make a protein, you start joining these individual amino acids together. So let's do that. We're going to form what's called a peptide bond between amino acid 1 and amino acid 2. To do that, <clears throat> we're going to we're going to react the carboxylic acid group of one amino acid with the amino group of another. We're actually going to pop off a hydroxyl group from amino acid one. We're going to remove a hydrogen from the amino group of amino acid two. And when you plug these together, you've just made a peptide bond uh, <clears throat> that has now created a dipeptide. We now have two amino acids with two different side chains joined together. So we're going to turn our attention now to these side chains or these R groups. And to do that, we have another model. Uh, this is a model of the side chains. This actually comes from something that we call the amino acid starter kit. In that starter kit, you'll find these 20 amino acid side chains. So each one of these, I have color-coded atoms. So this is an aspartic acid with two red oxygens, two gray carbons. And it has a red clip on it. The red clip clues you in that these two amino acids, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, are acidic residues, and they both carry a negative charge. Okay? So going back to the water kit for a minute, remember the chloride ion had a negative charge associated with it. We go over here, we've got some blue clipped amino acids. These are basic amino acids that will have a positive charge at neutral pH. So they're like the sodium of the sodium chloride pair. Up here at the top, we have a whole bunch of side chains that have only gray carbon atoms in them. So they're like ethane. They are hydrocarbons. And they have yellow clips on them. So even though all of these yellow ones are structurally different. They all share the chemical property that they're hydrophobic. So they get grouped up here. We have some white ones down here that are very colorful. They have some oxygens and nitrogens in addition to carbons. They are uncharged, uh, but they are polar. So let's back up for a minute. The yellow hydrophobic side chains up here are like the ethane hydrocarbon. The white polar side chains down here are like the hydrophilic ethanol molecule. So I hope you see how the principles of chemistry that you derive from the water cup can be applied here. We have two green clipped amino acids, or actually two copies of, of one amino acid. This is cysteine. 
and we highlight it with a different colored clip uh, for a reason you're going to see in just a second. This amino acid can form a covalent disulfide bond with itself. So you'll be doing that in just a second. So these are the 20 amino acid side chains. So now a protein is simply a linear sequence of the 20 amino acids. So we're going to set this aside. And I'll pull out yet another model. This is our model of a protein. So this is a 15 amino acid long protein. And all I've done to make this model is that I've taken 15 amino acid side chains off of this pie chart, and I've just added them randomly along this about four foot long tuber. This is a foam covered wire. So this is a pretty good representation then of what a protein is. It's a linear sequence of amino acids. This is made inside the cell on a ribosome. And as soon as it comes out of the ribosome, it finds itself in a very aqueous, water-filled environment. The inside of a cell is about 70% water, which we know is polar, hydrophilic. So this protein is now going to spontaneously fold up into a compact 3D shape following basic principles of chemistry. And the first principle you might want to try to follow as you fold your protein is that all these yellow, yellow colored um, hydrophobic amino acids, they're going to want, they're, they're hydrophobic, they're afraid of water, so they will cluster together in the center of this globular protein. And then the rest of the protein, the other side chains, will sort of fold around them, almost as though they're trying to protect the hydrophobic core from the water that's floating all around here. All right, so regardless of the sequence that you randomly made up, you'll be able to cluster the hydrophobic yellow side chains together. But now the problem is that that's not the only principle of chemistry that we have to satisfy. There's another principle of chemistry that says that positively charged side chains like to be close to negatively charged side chains. Uh, to make what's known as an electrostatic interaction, sometimes referred to as a salt bridge. So I was very lucky because without even thinking about it, as I made my hydrophobic core, these two ended up very close to one another. But we always set this activity up so that we have two salt bridges. So here is a negatively charged side chain. Here's a positively charged side chain. And this is going to be okay because now I can just modify my structure slightly so that I bring these two charged, oppositely charged residues together. So here's a shape that simultaneously satisfies two principles of chemistry. Okay, so now we're feeling pretty good, except watch this. This is going to be a problem. Put two green cysteines here. I have to find a shape that simultaneously has a hydrophobic core two salt bridges, and a disulfide bond. So somehow, I have to get the two cysteines close to one another. All right, so I'm going to have to modify a little further. It's perfectly legitimate in this activity to rotate side chains around the tuber. Uh, so there's my disulfide bond, but you see I've lost my second salt bridge. Now I brought my second salt bridge back into play. Uh, and now I have a pretty good structure here. Let's just check it out. I have a structure in which I have a hydrophobic core that I'm holding down here with this hand. I have one salt bridge up here, another salt bridge over here, and I have a disulfide bond. So here is a 3D structure, complex 3D structure, that uh, simultaneously satisfies three basic principles of chemistry.